In this brief but hopefully informative video, we're going to cover an in-depth analysis of the heel shin test, including the theoretical background of why you perform it and then look at a practical demonstration of how to do it. This assessment typically forms part of a neurological examination, specifically when you're concerned about cerebellar pathology. So let's start off this video with looking at the underlying theory as to why you perform the test before we move on to look at the practical demonstration. So the heel shin test is a good way to assess lower limb coordination. And when the patient completes the movement, the sequencing of steps should be done in a smooth fashion. The heel shin test is the lower limb equivalent of the finger to nose test. And I've produced a full in-depth video on the finger to nose test, the link for which you can find in the description box of this video. Now you're going to see a demonstration later on in this video of a normal heel shin examination. However, if the patient was unable to do this in a coordinated fashion, for example, if the heel was not able to run down the shin in a straight line, this would be considered to be an abnormal test and would potentially be suggestive of ipsilateral cerebellar pathology. The medical term for an uncoordinated heel shin test is dysmetria. So now we know why you'd perform this clinical examination. Well, let's go ahead and look at how you're going to do it in practice. So when you explain the test, you can break it down into four clear steps for the patient. First of all, ask the patient to place their right heel on their left knee. Secondly, and ideally in one smooth motion, they should run it down their shin in a straight line. Thirdly, they should then remove the heel and return it to the starting position over the left knee. Finally, they should then repeat the sequence, ideally in a smooth motion until you tell them to stop. Once the patient has done this on one side, repeat it on the other. Now it's important to note that weakness, for example from an upper motor neuron lesion, can also produce apparent incoordination of this movement. As a result, you should assess power before any diagnostic conclusions are drawn. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you learned something new, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you've got any questions, comments, or queries, leave them in the comments section of this video and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks once again for watching, and until next time, bye.